It wasn't that long ago and I did a video on the best selling tent on Amazon, the best selling backpacking tent. Well folks, things have changed and this is the latest best selling tent on Amazon. This is the Mountain Smith Morrison two person tent. And this is the number one best seller at the time of filming. This video here begins a four part series dealing with this tent. This is the preview. Then there's going to be the setup. Then there's going to be the test night episode where we test out the waterproof capabilities of this tent. Also ventilation, condensation, and so on. And ultimately we will have the review. If you want to support the outdoor gear review, hit the thumbs up. That's all it takes. Of course, if you want to support the channel financially, you can do so and it is appreciated. Patreon, and you can also be a member here on YouTube. You can join the Wolf Pack. The Outdoor Gear Review is agenda free. I bought this tent with my own money so I can share my feedback with you all. If the product's good, I say so. If the product's bad, I say so. Thanks everybody, I appreciate you. What we need to do first is take a look at the contents of this tent. Let's see what was included. You have a mesh gear caddy, tent poles, tent stakes. You have the fly, and you also have the body. Those are the components that are included with the Morrison 2. Now I will set it up and go over the stats. So to start off here, this is a freestanding tent that requires only the doors to be staked out. It has two doors, two vestibules. This is a three season tent. The weight of this tent is five pounds, 13 ounces on my scale. The retail price of this tent is $180, but I paid $140 on Amazon. When it comes to the materials, you're looking at a 30 denier nylon storage bag, 70-75 aluminum stakes, aluminum poles that are 8.5 millimeter. The fly is a 185T polyester that features a PU coating and a 2000 millimeter hydrostatic head rating. The mesh is a 185T breathable poly. The floor body is a 190T polyester that features a PU coating and a 5000 millimeter hydrostatic head rating. The zipper are YKK. The pack size is 18 inches by seven and a half inches. And with the set of dimensions, you're looking at 92 inches by 56 inches by 43 inches. As you all can see, the tent has been set up and that was a rather easy process. You could set that up in less than 10 minutes with a little bit of experience. That's not to say that the overall setup process couldn't be better because it could be. When it comes to the stakeout points, they are non-adjustable. What you have are these straps, they're non-adjustable. So if you're setting this tent up on a level surface, no big deal, you will get a good pitch. But if the ground's not level, because you can't adjust those lines, your tent will be imperfect when it comes to the setup process. And you can see that with this setup here. It's not completely flat here, it's not completely level. And when it comes to the front and back, you can't pull the fly away from the body. And that means that you will get decreased airflow. This problem could be solved with adjustable lines. If you plan to purchase this tent, go ahead and add those yourself. It will make a huge difference. In addition to those observations, I have a few more. First off, the vents feature a good design. There's quite a bit of material up behind here, so you don't have to worry about wind-driven rain being blown inside of the tent. The zipper pulls themselves aren't very good, but the zippers are smooth. The next observation to make here with this tent are the doors themselves. You can see there is very limited mesh here. You have all of that polyester fabric and very little mesh. What does that tell you? That should tell you everyone that this tent offers very limited breathability. You have all of that fabric. That fabric will block wind, block airflow, and it will trap in some heat. It will hold it in a little bit. So in summertime use, this could be one hot tent. You would need to make sure to set this up in the shade. You will need to make sure to have the doors facing the breeze so you could stay as cool as possible. But the front and the back of the tent are basically blocked by the fly. So airflow there is going to be limited. It's all about getting airflow through those doors. You might be wondering why the company went with more fabric instead of mesh, and that's because of price. The fabric is less expensive than the mesh is. And this is something that you will see being done with less expensive tent products. With the doors, you have two-way zippers. And with those doors, they could be almost completely unzipped. Check that out. That's awesome. Zipping the doors up, let's take a look at the mesh that is available. So that's it folks, right there you have it. On each side of the tent you have this rather small window. The window itself is of a good size, but you have a good part of the fly blocking it. So you have like this <laughs> triangle right here, and that's about it. Now of course on the sides of the tent you do have more mesh, but it's blocked by the fly. And that's one reason why you want to attach the adjustable guy lines, especially to the front and back of this tent. You want to be able to pull that fly away from the body so you can get as much airflow as possible. Whew. 
Holy crap. <laughs> this tent is in the shade. It's roughly 77 degrees right now, and it is plum hot inside of there. With the fabric that goes over the mesh, you can tie this off and get it out of the way. In the corners, you have pockets. One large one, one small, one large, and you have the same features on the other side. You do have a mesh gear caddy, but I haven't installed it yet. The tent features tape seams and a bathtub floor. Now folks, let's go over my impressions of this tent, starting with build quality. Overall, it looks good. I'm not seeing any loose threads, everything looks good. The seam taping all looks excellent. Also, I'm not seeing any light coming through the fly material. The materials themselves are good, they're not great. They are a very cheap, very inexpensive polyester. This tent is almost six pounds, so it needs a very thick PU coating, and it also needs heavyweight polyester for it to be a strong shelter. For a tent that I paid roughly $140 for, the overall materials aren't bad. As I mentioned before, the setup process is easy. The zippers are good, there's a lot of pockets. This is a spacious tent. Two people can easily fit inside of this and their gear. You have the two vestibules. Both individuals can easily sit up, change clothes, and whatnot. Because this tent features a high profile, you need to make sure to stake this out in windy conditions, or if there's a chance of storms. When it comes to size and weight, this is a heavy tent. This is a large tent. It will take up a lot of space inside of your backpack, and it's going to be heavy to carry. Because of this, in my opinion, this is more of a car camping tent. A two-person tent that weighs six pounds, that's pretty heavy. That's almost to the point of being unreasonable for a backpacking tent. But for car camping, who cares about the weight? Who cares about the form factor? Already, we know that this is going to be a hot tent. So that is something that you need to keep in mind. If you're in a location where you have to camp with the fly on, this is going to be a warm tent. Thanks to all of that polyester material, it just holds in the heat. It blocks air. It's hot. It really is. Again, it's 77 degrees today. There's a nice breeze in the air. And inside of this tent, set up in the shade, it is stifling hot. It's stifling hot. I could tell you already without testing this tent out that if you live in a hot environment, this is not the tent for you. Find a tent that has a lot of mesh and allows for really good airflow. That's the key. Having a tent that's just covered in fabric, that's good for the fourth season. That's not good for the third season. Now that we're going into fall, I plan to test this tent out and I'm excited to see just how well it performs. How does it handle heavy rain? condensation, and so on. So folks, there you have it. That is the Morrison 2 from Mountain Smith. When it comes to the company, I do not have much experience with them, so make sure to comment down below and share your experiences concerning this company. They make a wide range of products, so if you have any sort of experience, please share it with the community. I do appreciate it. This has been part one. This is the preview. The next part will be the before you buy, which is the setup process. We will go through the setup process step by step, and we will talk about the pros and cons of that setup process. Then we will have part three. That is the test night episode where we will test this for waterproofness, airflow, condensation, and so on. And then finally, we will have part four, which will be my agenda-free review. That's it for now, everyone. Take care, be well, strength and honor. I'll see you soon. Bye, folks.